Today is part two of our collection update series, and we got new cards and new packs to show off for you today. Let's jump right in. Guys, welcome back to my MTG collection series. This is the series where we get to look at all the new additions to my collection that I have picked up this week. I've got a lot of stuff to get through today. Some singles, some packs, and some awesome new stuff. I really hope you guys enjoy this series. Before we actually jump into this, I just want to encourage you, if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. Leave some suggestions down below. I would love to improve this series, make it as good as I can, because as you guys know, and as I talked about in, I think, the previous video, collection collection and collecting the act of collecting the the fun of doing that is really what got me into magic and what I love about magic still today even more so than the gameplay side so this is a little bit of a peek behind the curtain a little bit of a more personal side of magic for me uh, that I would love to share with you guys and so I hope you guys enjoy this one I think it'll be a good one let's dive right in we got tons of stuff to look at all right guys so like i said we've got a lot to go through today we're going to start with the singles as we did last week and then move into the sealed product last week we took a look at some of the we only really had three singles that we picked up uh, a handful of packs and then a couple bundles today we've mostly just got singles and then a bunch of packs so let's jump into the singles right away though and start with we're gonna do this kind of set by set we've got two kamigawa cards here we have got kira the boundless sky and then a beautiful foil kami war uh which is an absolutely stunning card i love this card in foil this actually completes completes the kamigawa neon dynasty set binder for me so i am super super stoked these are the last two cards i needed to finish this one out so that is a binder off of the plate we will no longer be seeing singles from the com or from uh, kamigawa unless they are something like a promo or something like that so very very cool to finish one already in episode two guess we had a little bit of a head start but again guys beautiful cards here uh absolutely stunning i love these uh just the art the art alone is absolutely amazing uh moving into some other singles we looked at last week uh chronicles a little bit we had a dacon black blade that we pulled we actually got a voodoo doll here as well from chronicles again only missing a handful of cards really do expect to finish that set uh very very soon and this is well on our way we've only got a couple cards i think it's like five maybe six cards left uh in the entirety of the set so uh hoping i can finish that up pretty soon and we'll hopefully have that done on a future video voodoo doll just one of the cards i needed it's not a super exciting card by any means but it is really cool to see these old white border cards don't get to see them all that often you know so uh kind of fun to see that moving on guys we are looking at some card sphere uh pickups again i talked about card sphere last week uh but it's a service that i use from time to time they're a really nice service really gr good group of people they really help out the uh buyers more so if that makes sense so you've got a lot of protection when you're using card sphere um and one of the cards that we actually picked up we've got a few different sets here i'll actually start with future site uh, so Future Sight was one of the sets, again, that were relatively close to finishing, and so went ahead and picked up a few cards from there. We've got the Thorn Wield Archer. Again, not a lot of value to most of these. Uh, however, it is still really cool. Again, finishing out these sets is really the goal, and uh, this is getting us well on our way. We've still got a little ways to go on Future Sight, but we are getting there. Diora of the Gitu, I think the only rare from the set that we picked up this week, uh, but a nice little pickup and kind of cool to see the original printing. Um, we do have the Empirosaur. I love the uh, frame on these. I think that's part of the reason why I really wanted to get Future Sight first uh, was because it's just one of my favorites. And then a Char Rumbler. Again, guys, not super exciting cards, not super valuable cards, but they do help finish sets for me, which is really important. Speaking of, we got one Dark Steel card in Fan Green Firstborn little 4-2 for mana action from dark steel i'm actually weirdly close to finishing dark steel uh and so again we might see a couple more cards there in the near future just to finish out some sets but really do love love uh, that we got that and then finally we've got a few fifth dawn cards here so we've got beautiful retaliate rare destroy all creatures that dealt damage to you this turn beautiful beautiful artwork uh we've got roar of reclamation sorcery each player returns all artifact cards from his or her graveyard to play. Very powerful card and, uh, again, beautiful artwork. And then finally, we have got Feedback Bolt. Not a super rare card by any means, but again, the artwork is just stunning in these old sets, and so I do love picking these up. Finally, guys, the last single that we actually picked up this week is uh, kind of a one-off, um, and you'll notice... 
what I've actually done is put this in an ultra pro semi rigid sleeve here. It is a secret layer to fairies puzzle box. Uh, these are some of the fun cards that I love to pick up. It's a bit of a silly one, a bit of an oddball card. Obviously, a lot of people probably have this, but it's just one of those cards that I never owned before and I thought I'd pick up and I'm really glad that I did because it really is a unique and beautiful card. Uh, and again, it's just really cool. I just bought this off a of TCG player. It's nothing like super crazy, um, but it is a cool one to add to the, to the collection here. And uh, I, I like cards like this. I think we'll see a lot of these in the coming weeks that are a little bit silly, a little bit random, uh, and just kind of some fun stuff. So very happy to have this one. Again, this is the last single, so let's jump into the packs. We've got a lot of packs this week. All right, so to go through all the packs, it is gonna take a little while. We're kinda, kinda gonna go through some of the least exciting ones first, uh, and then probably work our way up to the more exciting packs. But again, we have got, uh, I'll just hold everything up here for you guys. We've got so much. Let me, if I can grab this. Uh, we have got tons of packs to talk about. So let's go ahead, let's jump right in. Our first little set here, uh, we just got these in today. These are Return to Ravnica packs. Funny enough, this is a set that I got back into Magic on. Uh, I uh, had, had sold out years ago, uh, or years prior to this. Ravnica was always my favorite set, and then uh, I decided to kind of jump back into collecting. Ended up selling out again after the fact, uh, after Theros block, but at the time, I really wanted to jump back into the game, and Return to Ravnica had just been out. Esper Control was just ridiculously good, uh, and a lot of the cards in Ravnica were just really fun to me, and so happy to pick some of these up just for the collection. They're not super valuable, but uh, they are just really cool packs, and so again, I'd, I'd like to just kind of open up that collection and see if I can get a little bit more in there. Uh, we do also have from the same block some Dragon's uh, Maze packs. This is potentially the worst set in history. <laughs> I think you can buy the whole set for like 50 bucks or something. It's ridiculous, but uh, it is a small set. There are a couple of cool cards like Voice of Resurgence is in there. I know Maze's End is a cool one as well. It's just a fun set. There's not a lot of value in it, but again, just thought I'd pick up a couple of packs and add those to the collection. Uh, we do have uh, five Oath of the Gatewatch packs here. Uh, not one of my favorite sets, however, the Return of Eldrazi I thought was a really interesting time in Magic, and this has Kozilek in it, I believe, is the big one, uh, the Great Distortion, and, you know, there are a lot of cool cards in here, but I don't really love, I, I kind of disliked this whole block. Uh, I thought it was a little gimmicky, a little silly, I j only really love the Eldrazi, but that was kind of enough for me, you know, like, that still got me through the set, got me to enjoy it. And uh, I'm really happy that I picked these up solely for that reason, because it's a little bit of nostalgia. These aren't expensive packs. You can pick these up for the price of a regular pack nowadays, but it's still kind of fun uh, to, to reminisce a little bit on years past and the things that we've, you know, opened up on previous years or whatever. Uh, Oath of the Gatewatch is certainly there. And so it's, it's really exciting to have these in the collection. Don't plan again on opening any of these packs, but uh, still kind of fun. Uh, another recent set, uh, main series set was Kaladesh. Uh, again, these just came in today as well. Kaladesh is a really fun set for a lot of reasons. Artifact theme uh, does have the masterpiece possibility, uh, but very unlikely. <laughs> uh, however, these packs do go a little bit higher than normal solely because of that. Um, you do get a lot of potential value in these packs. And so uh, it is actually really cool to have some of these and hopefully they appreciate in value over the years uh, as they have over the last couple. But uh, the masterpieces, the inventions, those are really the big cards to pull out of this set. That being said, though, I just enjoyed playing this set. This is one that I played a lot of limited on, uh, and it was a blast. All the little Thopter tokens, little artifact sub-theme was just phenomenal. And it did have some powerful cards in it uh, that are still fairly relevant. And so happy to pick up a few of these packs. I would love to add some more long term. Uh, but again, right now, I'm just trying to get some breadth of sets. Uh, and so we'll see uh, some interesting ones coming up now. The first one's Battle Bond. Uh, this is a bit of an interesting one. We actually did get four packs of Battle Bond as well. This is an interesting set to me. Uh, it's one that got a little overlooked, in my opinion. Um, I think there's some amazing reprints in this set, including things like True Name Nemesis, uh, including things like Doubling Season, uh, some really powerful cards. Not only that, there was a lot of new stuff that came out of this that was really fun. Will and Rowan were awesome planeswalkers, in my opinion. Uh, we had a lot of partners in the set, uh, and the pack structure was very different because this was actually meant to be a draft 
uh, two-headed giant format, uh, which is unique. That's never been done before or since, uh, albeit, you know, this is a fairly recent set. It's never been done, though, aside from in Battle Bond, and I really like that. I like the uniqueness there. I love the reprints in the set. It felt like uh, a conspiracy-style set where they kind of picked a gimmick and, and really went for it, and it didn't disappoint, in my opinion. Uh, so I'm happy to have a couple of these packs. These I might open up down the road because they are just so fun. Uh, and you do have that opportunity to get multiple rares in a pack. Like if the if the partners, uh, both partners will be in every pack. So if you got like Will Rowan, uh, Will Kenrith as an example, you would have gotten Rowan as well in the same pack. There is also the super rare like foil alternate art versions of both of them. I did actually already pull those uh, when the set initially came out, which was a pretty awesome experience. So maybe we'll get there again one day, but for now, they're staying sealed. Um, now, we're getting into the last four sets here that we have, and these are really where I am excited. Uh, these, these packs I think are gonna be amazing to hold on to into the collection. We're gonna start with Legions. Legions is a sick set. Also, you'll notice there's a sub-theme of slivers in like almost all of these. Uh, that was accidental. Uh, as you guys know, the <clears throat> the way I pick these uh, is completely random. Fun fact. Uh, I go to scryfall.com, hit random. If the card that shows up is in a set that I can buy a pack for and afford it, uh, I do. And that's, that's the whole way I do that. Uh, it's actually the way I pick up a lot of singles as well is by just doing that and setting a budget for myself and having some fun. So uh, Legions was one of them that came up. Again, just some beautiful pack art, some beautiful cards in the set as well. I think Seedborn Muse is in here. Uh, is it Sliver Hive Lord that's in here, I believe? Some some really awesome old school cards. Uh, so very happy to see these. Again, don't plan on opening, but just really powerful packs, you know? Like it, it's just so fun. I used to I used to play with these. Uh, and so it's really cool to see that. Uh Planar Chaos is also here again, that sliver slub sub theme coming through. Really unique packs came through with the uh color shifted cards, so you know, as an example, we had Wrath of God initially. Uh, this set gave us Damnation, which was the black version of Wrath of God. Uh, and it just gave us a lot of that style stuff. We got a lot of oddities in the set uh, that are super unique to the set and give it its own flavor, give it its own fun. Uh, and it's something that, again, I played with back in the day. This was a set that I tried to collect a good bit of uh, and had a good bit of, even as a little teenager. <laughs> uh, and so it was actually a lot of fun to, to open up this set and to see it on this uh, series I think is really awesome because it does kind of bring back those memories again a lot of this is just me reliving nostalgia uh, and certainly these old packs do that for me um, we do have two more uh, so uh, let's make sure these don't fall over uh, we have Scourge uh, Scourge was a cool one um, one of my favorite mechanics came from this set which was Storm uh, as you guys know Storm is one of my favorites uh, brain freezing tendrils of agony uh, I believe Dragonstorm was in this as well. Lots of really awesome, unique uh, cards in this set. That old border that we see in Legions and some of these older sets, just super awesome. Uh, again, had a few of these back in the day. I believe I had some of the starter decks for Scourge uh, back when they did, you know, just a couple of like, or a set of like four or five theme decks for each set. Uh, I believe I had one or two of them and this was a really fun one. We had a lot of unique cards out of this. Storm being my favorite mechanic, so that's really what I'm most excited about. Uh, but there's still a lot of value in these packs. And again, seeing that old border, I think this came out in like 03 or something. Uh, very, very old school for me. Uh, and so really cool to see these here. And guys, the last packs uh, that we got for this week are actually 8th edition Corset. Um, Corset's really awesome. Uh, a lot of people kind of don't love the latest core sets, I think. Although, I think they've done a lot to kind of revitalize, we'll say, the core sets recently. But, you know, some people are a little bit hesitant towards the core sets because they're generally not the most powerful sets. However, they've printed some good core sets in the past, and 8th edition is up there. Uh, Bribery is in this set. Uh, we've got, I believe, City of Brass as a land. Uh, and Snaring Bridge, I think, is in here. I mean, there's a lot in 8th edition. Uh, my favorite is always 7th edition. That's actually the set that I started on Magic uh, with. I, I got the little, you know, disc CD disc set with the little starter packs. Uh, but 8th, 8th edition did come soon after uh, in my collecting. And so this is heavy, heavy nostalgia. It's that cool white border, uh, but with the modern frame. This is actually when, like, right around the time they in introduced modern. Uh, and so as a format, 
Uh, and it's just so unique. It's so cool. I love, guys, the nostalgia here is just phenomenal. That's ser seriously what this whole series is about, is just reliving some of these awesome moments, these awesome sets that you really don't get to just see and collect anymore. And so it's a really unique experience for me. Absolutely love picking these up. That is all the stuff that we have today. That's all. That's all of it that we have got, guys. Uh, I just want to say, uh, from the bottom of my heart, for you guys watching, I really do appreciate it. This is such a unique experience. And again, this is such a personal side for me uh, on the collecting aspect. Collecting is really what got me into magic. It's what drew me into magic. It's what I still love about magic. It's what I do uh, more so than anything else in relation to the game. Collecting is just so fun for me uh, that that's, that's always been the focus. And so to be able to put some content out that hopefully focuses on that makes it a little bit of fun to kind of relive some of these moments and, and talk through some of these old sets. I just think it's a really unique experience. And so I'm really glad I get to share this with you guys. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, leave me suggestions down below. Leave me comments down below. We will shoot for another one next week. We've got a lot of singles coming, I believe, for next week. Uh, and maybe a couple packs along the way. I don't actually remember. Uh, but we do have quite a number of singles, which I'm excited to talk to you guys about. So uh, please do stay tuned for that next week. Check out all the gameplay on the, the channel. Uh, we've tried to keep up with the one a day every day uh, kind of deal and it's been really fun. So thank you guys so much. Again, I really appreciate it. I, uh, I love you all. I'll see you again soon.